Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture series. And in today's lecture, we are going to continue our discussion of alkenes by looking at the process of hydrogenation of alkenes. So that is coming up on the channel right now. Okay, so hydrogenation of alkenes. This is going to be a reaction where alkenes are going to react with hydrogen gas, H2, and a metal catalyst in order to provide the saturated alkane in return. So you're essentially going to take a pi bond, you're going to remove the pi electrons, and in return, you're going to get two new hydrogens that have been added essentially saturating the compound and creating an alkane out of an alkene. Now, this is different from hydration because we've done a couple of videos on hydration, a couple of lectures on hydration, which is the addition of water. Hydrogenation is just the addition of hydrogens. And hydrogenation, because we're not adding any types of oxygen here, is going to be classified as a reduction reaction. So, a lot of students know redox or uh, reduction oxidation from their general chemistry lectures. However, in organic chemistry, though that still applies, but usually the way that we look at uh, oxidation and reduction in organic chemistry is all centered around carbon. And so we call it oxidation if there's oxygens that have been added to the carbon, and we generally will call it a reduction reaction if hydrogens have been added to the carbon and removal of carbon-oxygen bonds. So if you see that moving forward, uh, just a point there. Again, it's still in terms of you know loss of electron density, gain of electron density, still makes sense with the Leo Ger moniker. Um, however. Sometimes it's viewed a little differently in organic chemistry. So what does this look like? Well, you've got your alkene. And again, we can use more specific examples as we move along in the lecture here. But we have our generalized alkene here. And you will expose that to the hydrogen gas and some sort of metal, which we'll talk about in just a second here. But you're going to have some sort of a metal catalyst. And the hydrogen gas is usually... Uh, adsorbed onto that catalyst. So you kind of have hydrogens attached to the catalyst. This is actually interesting because it is a heterogeneous mixture instead of a homogeneous mixture. And that tends to be pretty rare as far as reactions go. They're usually all homogenized in solution. And so the result is that you're going to get the addition of two hydrogens in place of the carbon-carbon pi bond, right? And then you would still have whatever was kind of attached uh, at these positions here. Now, what are the uh, metals that we actually use as the catalyst beds? So the most common metal catalysts are going to be platinum, which will have the uh, atomic symbol PT, and palladium, which will have the atomic symbol PD. And usually we will couple those with some other sort of atom or mixture. And so you can see the platinum here is typically used as the platinum oxide, the PTO2. And then the palladium will usually be with some sort of a carbon mix. So you have a palladium carbon mixture or catalyst bed. And then the hydrogens, again, will be adsorbed onto that catalyst bed and it creates something that I usually like to call a C, S E A, of hydrogens or a C of H's. And so if you take a look here and you think this, right, just running along here, would kind of be your catalyst bed. Okay, so this is a metal surface. And then attached to this are going to be lots of hydrogens that are available for reaction with the. Uh, alkene when it comes in and we're going to take a look at the mechanism here in a minute uh, the suggested or proposed mechanism uh, which we get a hint about from the stereochemistry that's observed so speaking of which the observed results here okay is that the stereochemistry we don't need to worry about the regiochemistry really because you're adding two hydrogens you don't have one group that's distinct from another 
However, the stereo chemistry, it's 100% sin addition. And again, as a reminder, sin addition means on the same face or the same side of the molecule. So we saw this previously in the hydroboration, the BH3 example, where the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen would add to the same face of the molecule. It was 100% sin addition. And we see the same thing here with the hydrogenation. We get both hydrogens that are attached on the same side or the same face of the alkene, whether they are being attached right above or below front or back however you want to kind of talk about it or look at it and so just to give you an example of uh, you know what that might look like let's say that we've got a cyclohexene and uh, we'll actually we'll put some methyls on there just to help differentiate this for the example all right so we'll have one two dimethyl cyclohexene and then when we take a look at this, we're going to expose it to the hydrogen gas and then one of our two metal catalysts. So let's just go ahead. We'll use palladium and carbon for this one. Okay, so what would be the result? Well, we would have the removal of the pi bond and we would have the addition of the hydrogens on the same face or the same side of the molecule. So if I'm going to have one of them facing up, the other one must also face up. If I had one of them facing down, the other must also face down. So that means that both of these methyls that were present there are going to be facing in the same direction as well. They're both facing down since these hydrogens added up in this position or this example here. Okay, so again, 100% syn addition, and we're talking about both of these are on the same face. Right? They're both pointing up the same direction or the same face of the molecule here. Now, the hydrogenation mechanism, it's not as traditional in terms of like all the arrow flow that we're used to seeing and things of that nature. Uh, but what we can do is we can kind of discuss it here and then we'll draw it out to the best of our ability. So the alkene pi orbitals are going to form a complex with the vacant orbitals that are on the metal surface okay so if you think about pi bonds you have the pi orbitals or those p orbitals that host the pi electrons they are going to come down and form a complex or interaction with vacant or empty orbitals that are on the metallic surface of the catalyst and from there, once we have that interaction or that complex that forms, the hydrogens that have been adsorbed onto the catalyst bed are going to be exchanged from the catalyst to the alkene on the same side of the molecule before they diffuse away. So what does this look like? Well, the best way that we could take a look at this is if you have your catalyst surface right here, we would have hydrogens right that are kind of present on this surface here now from there we could say that the next step or the next portion is going to be this complex that is going to form so now we could talk about having our alkene catalyst complex And that is going to be where the alkene will come down. It will interact, particularly the pi orbitals, right? The p orbitals involved with this pi bond will come down and complex or interact with the metallic bed. And then we still have hydrogens that are present around here. Right? So after this complex has formed, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is the exchange of the hydrogens. So a lot of times, if you see this in texts or in examples, what you'll see is you've kind of got one hydrogen that's still waiting for the exchange. And then the other one here has already okay, uh, attached itself. So it's kind of come off of the catalyst bed, right? And it's interacting here. So we could have this and this. And then if you take a look at this, this would still kind of use those uh, pi electrons to hold on to or interact with the catalyst bed until this hydrogen uh, had moved over here, the bonds associated or the electrons associated with it. All right. So this step is really the hydrogen exchange that's going to occur here from the catalyst bed over to the alkene and that's eventually going to become an alkane in the next step here and we do want to keep in mind again 
because of the stereochemical outcomes that we observe in the lab that this is happening on the same face right we have to preserve the sin stereochemistry and that makes sense because if you kind of have this catalyst bed or this metallic surface and the alkene comes and coordinates to it it's going to be coordinating itself in such a fashion that it will interact with one side of the alkene when that connection is made and it kind of locks it in there and then we'll exchange the hydrogens on that same surface or same face of the catalyst okay so once that's done and the prior alkene has been turned into an alkane it is released and then you have your product which would be the alkane so again the hydrogens would be adding to the same face or the same side of whatever we would have here right and then we would still have whatever these other portions would be here we could call them r groups maybe they're methyl groups or something like that and then that's the general mechanism right so we started with an alkene and we end up with an alkane or a saturated form of the hydrocarbon Hey, now a couple of notes here to wrap this up because we're almost done. So number one, some people may have heard of this. This is very commonly used in the food industry where we utilize the term hydrogenated fats. So if you ever turn over a package, especially if you get some of the, the um, like junk food, like prepackaged cupcakes or chips or things like that, some of them, if you turn them over, will say hydrogenated oil or partially hydrogenated fat or oil. And so what that is, is that the food industry can take seed oils um, or, you know, vegetable oils that have a lot of polyunsaturated content, they have a lot of double bonds, and they expose them to the metallic catalyst along with the hydrogen that's absorbed there and you can essentially get rid of those double bonds and try to um, create a saturated fat out of it now this can also be problematic because you can get partial hydrogenation and even some of them will say partially hydrogenated fats and you can end up with trans fats and in fact there's been kind of a, a recent push against margarine and some of these other uh, techniques that are using this because of the potential for trans fats that you end up having there so generally my advice just from a chemical perspective if you want the saturated fat you should go to a natural saturated fat source okay so a lot of these other um, types of products that use the partial hydrogenation or attempt to do a hydrogenation you could probably just go to a natural source and it would it would be better in terms of the saturated fat you're getting all right now in terms of the uh, mechanism itself it is extremely sensitive to sterics so sterics being bulky groups and it will only add the hydrogens to a non-hindered face of the molecule so there are times where you could get one side of the double bond that is going to have quite a bit of steric hindrance or larger groups that might be um, preventing the hydrogenation from occurring on that particular face and in that case you may see it is only adding to the top or only adding to the bottom for its syn addition due to the sterics so just keep in mind that this reaction is sensitive to sterics when it's uh, undergoing the mechanism and then finally this is a big key here this will not work for aromatics now there are versions there are ways that you can kind of hydrogenate aromatics and we can discuss that different uh reaction in the aromatic chapter where it would belong but this is an alkene chapter and aromatics are not alkenes even though they have multiple double bonds there are different properties that make up aromatic compounds you can look on my channel we've gone in and we've discussed uh, you know what makes something aromatic versus not when we look at Huckel's rule and we look at a uh, planar cyclic compound and things like that but needless to say if I have something like toluene here and I attempt to do a hydrogenation where I would expose it to the metallic catalyst with the hydrogen, I get no result, meaning that I would simply get this material back. I would not have any type of change there, okay? Because some students will get confused and they will think that you could end up with this as the product, and that is not correct. This will not form. And a lot of that has to do with the free energy and the stability of aromatic systems aromatic systems are far more stable than an alkene especially a single alkene bond um it, the the ability to get the aromatics to undergo reactions they need different catalysts they need different setups and most importantly 
almost all the time your aromatic system must return to an aromatic state at the end of the reaction because aromaticity or the state of being aromatic is so stable that it will not um, basically undergo a reaction where it will no longer be aromatic unless you have you're overcoming some serious energy uh, barriers okay so that pretty much takes care of what i wanted to talk about with hydrogenation so as always thank you so much for learning with me head on over to chemcomplete.com you can support us there and supporting us on youtube always works as well thumbs up the video if you found it helpful comment if you need any sort of interaction i'll try to get back to you and as always subscribing will keep you up to date in your chemistry lectures as you proceed through in whatever schooling you're doing thank you so much for learning with me and i will see everybody in the next one